So we are going to discuss the contemporary global governance. So the word that could really help us understand the topic is the word governance. We have, we have heard several times the word global. When I say global, look at the picture. There is a table, a round table. The round table has different chairs. That chair symbolizes each representative from each country. So that symbolizes the connectivity, uh, the connection, the relationship of each country of the world, which is put into one table. And we have the word governance. Governance from the word government. So we have our own government, but there is what we call international or global governance. We still need that government or governance in the international setup because that could be a basis. No? Uh, if you try to remember, President Duterte, our president, did not recognize, did not recognize no, when he was being asked that the International Court of Justice will be going to send a representative to conduct an investigation of extrajudicial judicial killings. And we also have the human rights violation of our president. No? And nagalit ang Pangulo. Dahil sabi ng Pangulo, bakit nyo kami pinapakialaman? We are a sovereign state. Again, binalikan natin ang salitang sovereign here. That's the claim of our president, President Duterte. He said, we are a sovereign state. We have our own judicial system. Mayroon kaming sariling uh, justicia. Mayroon kaming sariling batas na pinapatupad. But don't, do not uh, forget that the Philippines is part of an international organization called United Nations. We are a signatory. When I say signatory, if you try to look at the picture right now, we have one seat there. Ibig sabihin, mayroon tayong sariling bangko dyan. No? Pumirma ang Pilipinas na maging bahagi ng mga international organization like United Nations. Ibig sabihin, subject tayo sa mga batas na itunatupad ng international governance or global governance. So, may dalawang conflict, no? na may conflict of, of statement, no? Una, ang Pilipinas ay bahagi ng United Nations. So, ibig sabihin, dapat tayo ay sumunod sa mga batas na pinatupad ng United Nations as an international law. But, nang nakita ng mga ng international organization o United Nations in general, basically, nakita daw nila na mayroon ng maraming pinapatay no? dahil nga sa war on drugs ng Pangulong Duterte. Kaya ang nangyari, Gustong paimbestigahan ng United Nations ang Pangulo ng Bansa, ang Pilipinas, dahil nga sa mga violation of, of human rights. But ayaw naman itong i-acknowledge si Pangulong Duterte. No? Ah, sabi niya sa mga statement niya, no? I don't like the United Nations to enter to our country. I don't like the International Court of Justice to investigate us here in our country because we have our own judicial system. And why? Uh, they will interfere. Ibig sabihin, bakit nga daw sila nakikialam sa ating bansa? We are a recognized sovereign state. So, there is a conflict out of there. So, ano nga ba itong contemporary global governance? Ibig sabihin, may mga batas na pangdaigdig na dapat ding sundin ng Pilipinas. Ngunit, mayroon din tayong mga sariling batas na pinatutupad dito sa ating mismo Pilipinas. So, what is global governance? So that would be a great question. No? Paano at ano ang mero, uh, paano ito pinapatupad at ano ang meron dito? Okay. Let's define. No? Again, pinakita na naman dito sa picture the it's a round table which every seat is represented by each country of the world. So ibig sabihin, may, may upuan dyan ang Pilipinas dahil bahagi tayo sa international organization particularly the United United Nation. Okay? So global governance refers to the various intersecting processes that create the world order. So big sabihin, bakit may pamangaan upang mapaitaguyod ang kaayusan? No? Sa Pilipinas, meron tayong mga meron tayong mga batas na ipinapatupad ng pamalaan or government. So the purpose of government is to implement peace and order. But in the concept 
of the scope of global governance, ang ibig sabihin nito ay meron tayong various intersecting processes. Ibig sabihin various napakaraming mga nagkukonek-konek na mga proseso para makalikha ng isang mapayapa at maayos na mundo. So ibig sabihin, various intersecting process that will create a world in order na hindi tayo magkakaroon ng conflict. So kapag ikaw ay kabahagi ng United Nations, ikaw ay pumerma na dapat sundin ang mga alituntunin at mga batas na pinapatupad ng na nasa na naayon sa global governance. So dahil tayo ay bahagi ng United Nations, dapat tayong sumunod sa mga batas na international laws which is to protect and also to to promote peace and order in the entire countries in the world. What else? Second bullet. It encompasses the institution of policies, norms, procedures and initiatives through which states and their citizens try to bring predictability stability and order to their responses to transitional changes according to UN in 2014. So, ibig sabihin mga organisasyon, mga pulisiya, mga pamantayan no, na dapat sundin ng lahat ng mga estado sa buong mundo para mapamatili ang stability at order no? at maging responsive no? sa mga pagbabago dulot ng mga tinatawag nating mga challenges no right now we are facing a challenge a territorial conflict war between china between china between russia and and ukraine and hindi na, hindi na tayo lalayo pa ang pilipinas ay mayroong mga territorial dispute sa pagitan ng bansang china ano at pilipinas dahil nga sa paggagawa natin sa mga teritoryo sa West Philippine Sea. So dapat tayo ay gumamit ng mga international laws. So ang Pilipinas ay ginagamit ang mga pandaigdigang batas para maklaim ang ating uh, makuha natin o maklaim natin ang ating teritoryo when it comes to Spratly, Scarborough, and other disputed territories of the Philippines uh, against China. So tayo ay humingi ng saklolo. Ito si saklolo, help. So, pumunta tayo sa United Nations at naghumingi ng tulong at desisyon sa International Court Tribunal dahil bahagi tayo ng United Nations upang mayroon tayong claim sa mga teritoryo na inaagaw, na inaangkin ng ibang bansa. Ngunit nga lamang, hindi ito nirecognize o inacknowledge ng bansang China ang International Court Tribunal. Dahil nagpalabas ng kautusan o desisyon ng International Court Tribunal na nagsasabi na ang mga teritoryong ipinag-agawan ng bansang Pilipinas at China ay ang nagmamayari niyan ay ang Pilipinas. Ngunit hindi kinilala ng China o ng China ang International Court Tribunal. Nga dapat lamang ay dapat nasundin ng China dahil nga gusto lamang ng global governance ng United Nations na maipatupad ang kapayapaan at kaayusan sa buong mundo. That's the definition of global governance. Kaya nga lamang hindi ito kinilala ng bansang China. Kaya sino naman po tayo na kukontrahin natin ang bansang China? Baka maaring ma-experience natin no? ang na-experience ng Ukraine. Na ang Ukraine ay isang triple ang laki nito sa bansang Pilipinas. At we all know that China is one of the biggest country, a powerful country, a military power. And who are we? We are Filipinos. No? I am not saying that we should not defend our country. As a Filipino, we should defend our country. But try to look at the power of China. Kung tayo talaga at ipipilit natin. I am not against to force, to implement the ruling of the International Court Tribunal because tayo ay, tayo ay, uh, nito, ay uh, pinanigan ng International Court Tribunal na sinasabi na ang mga teritoryong pinagagawa ng Pilipinas at China, ang tunay na nagmamayari nito ay ang bansang Pilipinas. Yun nga lamang, ang bansang China ay hindi ito kinilala. That's the sad point of, of, of the implementation of the global governance. Na hindi naman pala kinilala ng bansang China ang desisyon 
ng global governance uh, ng, ng ng international court of tribunal na bahagi ng global governance. No? Ano ang purpose ng global governance? Para magkaroon ng ang buong mundo ng order at kaayusan. Ngunit may mga talagang malaking bansa no na hindi kumikilala sa sa decision ng mga international uh, court na kaya ng China. Okay. Saan ba na nagmumula ang mga global governance o sources of global governance? We have mga kasunduan or treaties and organization like UN. International non-government organization na bahagi pa rin ng UN. Powerful transnational corporation. Ito yung mga malalaking company na discuss natin to, di ba? We have the multinational uh, multinational corporation, the transnational corporation. So sila ang naging basihan ng mga batas na itinapatupad sa pandaigdigang mga uh, alintuntun, alintuntunin. So let's start with the IO or the International Organization. If you try to look at, there are flag pools, flag pools of different countries. Maaring kabilang dito ang Pilipinas dahil halos lahat ng excuse me, international organization ay kabilang dito ang Pilipinas. So international organization often refers to international intergovernmental organization or groups that are primarily made up of member states. So kadalasan ito, tingnan mo itong mga logo. We have itong nasa ibaba, uh, nasa kaliwa pala, World Trade Organization. Ito ay may kinalaman sa pakikipagkalakalan, trading, no? Uh, pakikipag-ugnayan sa ibang bansa, pagpapalit ng mga produkto. Ang Pilipinas ay bahagi ng World Trade Organization. On the upper right side, uh, pare-pareho sila. Yung may bata na kinakarga yata ng ina, yan ay UNICEF. No? At sa ibaba naman, mayro, halos magkatulad lang din dahil yan ay organization na mula sa United Nations. Ang um, World Health Organization, which is very busy right now, Finding solution for the world pandemic. So that's an example of international organization. Like us, we are uh, also experiencing the problem of pandemic, but we need to follow the World Health Organization in their different advice. So that's that's one way of implementing a global governance. Uh, in rules and implementation guidelines that was given by the World Health Organizations are organization are also followed by our interagency inter task force against COVID, no? the IATF, dahil doon din tayo nakabase sa World Health Organization. So that's a simple example of, of uh, global governance. So the powers of international organization, ano nga ba ang kanilang kapangyarihan? Kaya nga kanina, sinabi ko, nagkaroon na ang International Court Tribunal ng Desisyon, ngunit hindi ito pinatupad. Tunay ba na may kapangyarihan ang international organization na magpatupad ng mga batas sa mga kasaping bansa nito? Dahil kung makikita natin sa Pilipinas lang nga mismo, ay hindi kinilala ng ibang bansa, malaking bansa, ang ruling ng International Court Tribunal. That's, how, that's the sad point of, of, of that. But let's try to look at the powers of international organization. Let's classify the power. The international organization can invent and apply categories, create powerful standards. For example, for the refugees, no? for example, we also accept refugees because we are partners, we have, we consider a, a country which are our allies. No? Ito yung mga, ref, ang mga refugees, ito ay yung mga nagahanap ng tulong dahil nagkakaroon ng, ng digmaan o anumang sakuna sa kanilang bansa at nagahanap sila ng ibang bansa na maaaring kumukup sa kanila. No, that's a refugee, ang tao. Power to fix meetings. So may karapatan din sila, may kapangyarihan sila na, na ibig sabihin, ay using ang mga meanings. No, it's, it's not meetings, it's meanings. Legitimate sources of information. Dahil kapag tayo ay gumagawa ng mga batas at alituntunin sa ating bansa, maaari din natin gamitin na reference ang mga international organization. Okay. Power to diffuse norms. Ibig sabihin, ipakalat ang mga alituntunin. 
or mga batas, regulad, or regulation. The international organizations spread ideas across the world establishing global standards. For example, in the recent time, we are experiencing the pandemic, the COVID-19. One of the international organizations who manage this type of pandemic is the World Health Organization. We are dependent of their standards. No, pag sinabi nila na dapat uh, ang distance is per individual to avoid the spread of the virus, it should be one and a half meters. So we also follow that one because that is a reference that was in uh, that 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 norms is spread and used by the World Health Organization, which is considered to be an international organization. Okay, hindi lamang positive ang nasa international organization. It could also have a negative effect, you know, the pros and the cons. Let's try to check what are the pros and cons of international organization. Let's start with the United Nations. So the history of United Nations. We have discussed this several times in the second, in the some of our discussions. The most prominent international organization in contemporary time, even today, United Nations is international, internationally acknowledged by each member state. It was founded in October 24, 1945, after the Second World War in San Francisco, California, USA. So the prime mover, the prime mover of the creation of the United Nations, of course, it's the United States. On January, in, on January 1, 1942, United Nations was coined by President Franklin D. Roosevelt. So, meaning to say, uh, the word or the term United Nations was created by Franklin D. Roosevelt, the U.S. President in the 1940s. The U.N. Charter was signed in August, uh, on June 26, 1945. In the 24th of October, 1945, 50 nations drew up the UN Charter in the United Nations Conference on International Organization. Poland was the last original member to join. It has now um, almost 193 member states since the 51 original members. Okay. So we have here the present. The night Secretary General took office on the 1st of January 2017 for a former United Nations High, High Commissioner for Refugee, Antonio Guterres, he is the Secretary General of United Nations as of today. So there are subgroups and organizations under United Nations. There are six, the General Assembly, the Security Council, the Economic Social Council, the Trusteeship Council, the International Court of Justice. So this is one, the International Court of Justice, which was very controversial when it comes to the conduct of investigation, of violation of human rights and extrajudicial killings in the Philippines under the uh, leadership, under the presidency of President uh, Duterte that was mentioned a while ago. And of course, the sixth one is the Secretariat. So let's have uh, this one individually. What are their functions? The main deliberative policy making body and the representative organ is the General Assembly. Enrique Manalo is the permanent representative of the Philippines in the United Nations. So we have a representative from the General Assembly in the person of Enrique A. Manalo. Security Council considers the most powerful organ, consists of 15 member states, five permanent, and 10 elected by the the GA for the General Assembly for two-year terms. Security Council permanent members. Well, imagine China is a permanent member of security. But then they did not recognize the, 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 the international ruling when it comes to the territorial dispute against the Philippines. USA, France, Russia, UK are the permanent members of the Security Council of the United Nations. The ECOSOC, or the Economic and Social Council, this is the central body for coordination, policy review, policy dialogue, recommendations, and social and environmental issues, and the implementation of internationally agreed developmental development goals. Here comes the International Court of Justice, which is very controversial when it comes to the Philippines right now. They have sent an investigator already here in our country about the extrajudicial killings and, of course, 
the violations have according alleged, allegedly uh, violation of human rights. Trusteeship Council, this was established in 1945, by UN Charter under Chapter 13 of, the, of their Constitution and Bylaws. The Secretariat consists of the Secretary General and 10,000 10, of international UN staff members. The Secretary, the Secretary General is a UN Chief Administrator, Administrative Officer. So basically the discussion was all about the United Nations because that's the international uh, or the global governance you know, that is ruling the entire country, the entire world, which are member state of this United Nations. Okay, so I think that's all for our international governance.